The one thing in the piece that I think the Clinton camp has to explain, I think it looks really bad that they haven't even tried to explain, is the fact Disclosure. that they ha right, but they they had an agreement with the Obama administration to d to publicly disclose these donors, and they didn't. And so, not only is there the kind of question of well, what were they hiding, but they just on their face of it violated what was a clear rule. And it's also not rebutted in the in the response, right? I mean, the response right. just doesn't address that. Right, it doesn't because I think the larger takeaway from that article is we caught the Clintons in a quid pro quo. We caught the Clintons selling U.S. policy for a speech to Bill Clinton, but, but, but it's not there. But okay, but here's the thing that drives me nuts. Okay, yeah. so the strongest version of this in the Clinton clash book, from the from what I have seen of the expert excerpts, right? You know, is this idea of quid pro quo. So in the Columbia free trade deal, right? Yeah. So Columbia makes a donation to the Clinton Foundation. The secretary pushes for a Columbia free trade agreement. Right. That seems pretty ridiculous on its face because. The Columbia Free Trade Agreement is a, is a is already a policy priority. It's going to happen independent. Exactly. What does seem clear, though, is there's a lot of money going in the Clinton Foundation, right. right? There's a lot of people who have interests before the State Department who are donating, right? And given what Hillary Clinton was walking into, shouldn't have there been unbelievable care taken <laughs> to put firewalls, to have ethics lawyers flagging stuff, to say to voluntarily, proactively disclose, to point out possible conflicts of interest? Well, look, I mean, you know, they raised $2 billion, and there's no evidence that any uh, yet of any criminal wrongdoing, anything that even be... There's a standard below the criminal copyright. wrongdoing. There's a standard no, of the perception not, of conflict no, of interest. that's not where this goes. Fox News wants uh, federal investigators so today. This is part of the larger plot, always, always, always. It's right. always based on well, criminality. Okay, so this is what I, I wrote today, is that there's people use the phrase Clinton rules in two different ways, right? Uh -huh. They use Clinton rules to talk about the Clintons don't think that they should follow the rules. And then there's Clinton rules, which is the way journalists consistently kind of throw out normal evidentiary evidentiary right. standards and going after the Clintons. Right. And both of these kind of rules exist, right? Like the Clintons regularly cut ethical corners and are like a little bit sloppy and there's conflicts of interest. And there is this kind of long-standing journalistic vendetta against the Clintons yeah. that kind of allows people to exaggerate and follow these um, sort of right-wing conspiracy theories down all sorts of rabbit holes and, and blind alleys to mix metaphors. And so it makes it very high. You, you sort of get epistemological whiplash trying to figure out um, right. which sort of Clinton rules we're doing so here's, with. Right. So here's, here's what I want, right? I mean, like, I've been, you know, I've been to Davos. I've covered Davos. I've, 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 I've been around reporting on some of the circles in which these right. folks move. And it's, it's, these are circles in which, like, yeah, people, like, lots of people give money to the Clinton Foundation, right? right. And lots of people have business before the State Department. And, like, there's going to be a Venn diagram, right? So there's going to be a plausible case to, 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 to be had about, like, well, was one connected to the other, right? right? My point is that in those, you have to be above, you have to be above and beyond under those conditions, right? I mean, like, I don't understand why you wouldn't put in the most rock-solid ethical safeguards, why you wouldn't have, like, compliance officers who are flagging this, right. why you would violate your own agreement with the well, White House on disclosure. Even short of rock-solid ethical safeguards, at least follow the rules that you've agreed to. Right. Well, again, I, I go back to the larger picture of this infrastructure, and I'm, I'm just going to make a quick uh, side note. What is in the news today? in terms of this permanent infrastructure of fishing expeditions, Hillary Clinton is going to be asked to testify in Benghazi in June about the attack, right. 30 months yes. after she attacked. That's right. So the Republicans have this blueprint for the Clintons and, yes, for the Obamas, too. You set up this permanent infrastructure, you get in the right-wing media, and then you lure the New York Times to chase it, too, but it's and it becomes this Obama permanent so you, here's my crap in right. the same way. Right. And here, well, here's my question, though. You say lure the New York Times, and I've seen you on Twitter sort of at attacking them on this, the, this sort of alleged partnership, or I guess it's not alleged, a yeah, partnership with the private. author. They're going to appear on the Fox News special this weekend. Right. So the, the, going after the Clintons. Right. But the, but the point here, though, is that, like, this does seem a, legit, a legitimate piece of journalism, and I don't think they got anything wrong. I mean, the well, this uranium story left all, uh, we talked at the beginning, they left all, all kinds of context in terms of who approved that deal. If you read that story, you, at the end, you think Hillary Clinton changed U.S. policy right. midstream because someone paid her husband for a speech. That is not even remotely close can, also, to what happened. Can I, can someone explain to me, and again, like, Bill Clinton can do whatever the heck he wants, but, like, the other thing I thought when I read that article was like, why wasn't there someone being like, hey, Bill, maybe you should just turn down the speaking engagement. Like, we don't need the half million dollars. Well, we don't know. Maybe they have. I mean, he is by far the number one draw, and he has been for a decade. Maybe no, he but I'm just saying, like, for his, you that know, specific one. I'm saying the Russian bank comes in, and it's like, okay, well, you know, some, some format yeah, yeah, or yeah. process where you say, okay, this Russian bank wants to pay half a million dollars. Okay, well, 
What what are they what what are they what are they up to right and then someone who says you know what actually it's probably best if you turn down this half million dollars half million dollars is a ton of money right you say like don't right. take half a million dollars <laughs> for you and I right <laughs> but at the same time like these are not people that are you know uh, uh, hurting for cash generally and I, I don't know why that also sort of drives me crazy about this but I just feel like. It's one of these yeah, why things. Leave, why leave yourself even? That's even, it. It's like one of these things where it's like, it. because of the permanent infrastructure you're talking about, yes. because they knew, because. Uh, it's their, okay. No, ahead, fine. Ahead. Yes, fine, fine. Respond to that, right? This was all they talked about in Hillary Clinton's confirmation hearings. No, I was going back through the transcript. The, all they talked about was the Clinton Foundation right, stuff. Right, they right. came up with this agreement. Yes. It's not like you couldn't see this coming, I guess is my point. Look, the, you know, the Republicans have made it a priority, certainly a, a year ago, that the Clinton Foundation was going to be their top priority in terms yes. of opposition research. Yes. And here we are talking about right. the Clinton Foundation as the number one opposition research. I don't think that's by accident, but I understand your point, your original point, in terms of setting up a divide. Yeah, I mean, the other thing about it that I think is interesting is, and we, we've been going through all this archival tape of the Clintons and, you know, we this Hillary Clinton from Atlanta. Right, 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 yeah. Is like, the, the, at a certain point, there becomes a sort of background din during the Clinton in the 90s of, like, you know, scandal, quote unquote, mm -hmm. some, some, somewhat real, some, a lot of it not, that it's almost like it's like living next to a train station, <laughs> where like you did, like, seriously, it's just like it ends up becoming right. this sort of atmospheric thing. And now we're kind of remembering like, oh, this is what's right. coming. So but then it's just like, oh yeah, like you, someone years. comes to your house and like you live above somebody, you're like, wow, that's loud. It's like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> Michelle Goldberg, Eric Bowler.